Hey guys, in this video we're going to show you how to create this testimonials slider. All right, guys, before we get started, I just want to mention that I'm creating this tutorial to show you that you can create other things besides a multi item image slider with the tiny slider library. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we have to do is bring in the font awesome and the tiny slider CDN. So let's open up our browser and we're going to search for the font awesome CDN. All right, let's click on the first link from cdnjs.com. We're going to click here to copy the URL. We're going to come up here, type in link, and then control V to paste that in there. All right, now we're going to come up here and we're going to search for tiny slider. Let's go ahead and click on that. And for this one, we're going to need these first two URLs. Let's start with the bottom one. Now let's come over here, type in link and control V. Now let's copy the first one. We can go ahead and exit out of here. And for this one, we're going to use the script tag. I go ahead and control V to paste that there. And we can go ahead and get started here inside the body. All right, let's create a section. We're going to give this an ID of testimonials section. All right, in here, let's create two classes container and subcontainer. These are going to help us make it responsive on big screen sizes. All right, now let's create a class with a name of testimonials wrapper. All right, so in here is where our slides are going to go. We're going to add a class with a name of header, and this is where the title of our slider is going to go. So we're going to type in testimonials in there. Let's create another class. We're going to give this one a name of slider wrapper and here is where we're going to create the slider itself all right so to create one slide we're going to create another class with the name of slide and in here we're going to add three things the image the text and the username okay so let's go ahead and create the div where we're going to add the image which we're going to give a class name of slide image and let's also add another class name of img1 All right, let's create a space and let's go ahead and add the text for this user. So we're going to use lorem 20 here and let's go ahead and add some quotes inside of that text. All right, let's add another space. Now a P element and this is where we're going to include the name of the person. I'm just going to make some stuff up here. All right, so that's our first slide. Let's go ahead and copy that slide twice so we're going to shift alt down twice one two and let's go ahead and change this from img1 to img2 and let's change the name as well this is going to be crystal and this is going to be img3 let's change the name here as well this is going to be john all right and right under the slider wrapper we're going to create another div. We're going to give this a class name or an ID name of controls. All right. And here we're going to add two buttons. The first one, we're going to give it a class name of previous. And the other one, we're going to give it a class name of next. All right. So now we're going to add an icon to both of these buttons. So let's go ahead and create a new tab here. And we're going to search for fontawesome.com. Let's go ahead and search for an angle left. This one here. Let's go ahead and click that to copy the HTML and we're going to paste that right in the center here. All right, now we're going to search for the angle right. All right, this one here. Let's go ahead and click that. We can exit out of here now. And let's go ahead and paste that in here. 
All right, and that should do it for the HTML. Now we're going to move on to the JavaScript so we can actually convert this into a tiny slider. So let's move on to our JavaScript. All right, in here, let's create a variable called TN slider. And this is where we're going to use the tiny slider library. All right, let's add the options of tiny slider that we want to use. The first one is we have to indicate where our slides are located. Now, we're going to use an option called slide by. We're going to set that to one because we want only one image to slide when we click on the previous or next button. Let's set the speed to 700. By default, it's 400. And we're going to set nav to true. That way we can see these three little dots here. Let's place them in the bottom of the screen though. So we're going to set nav position to bottom. And we also want to set autoplay to true. And we're also going to use autoplay timeout. So how often do we want it to slide images? Let's say every seven seconds. Let's also use autoplay button output. So when we use autoplay, by default, it gives us a button to stop the autoplay. We're going to set that to false so we can't see it. Now we're going to use another option called controls container because we are using a custom controls. So we have to indicate where it's located. Well, we gave that an idea of controls. And we also have to indicate the previous button. So we stored that with a class name of previous. So we're going to add that in there. And last but not least, we have to indicate where our next button is located. So we give that a class name of next. And that should do it for the options here. So as you can see, now this is working. Now we're just going to add some CSS to make this look a lot nicer. All right, we're going to start off by removing the margin from all of the elements. Now let's get access to the testimonials section. We're going to set the height to auto and let's change the background color to black and the color to white. All right, now for the container, we're going to give that a width of 1600 pixels and we're going to set margin to auto. Now for our sub container, we're going to go with the width of 85% and margin auto. So these two classes are gonna help us make this responsive on big screen sizes. So by setting a width of 85% to a width of 1600 pixels, this is gonna ensure that we always have space on the left and the right of the screen. But the problem with this is that setting a width of 1600 pixels makes it not responsive on mobile devices. So we have to add a media query down here. So we're gonna indicate that at a max width of 1600 pixels we want to change the width of our container to 100 percent right so now this is going to be responsive on big screen sizes and on small screen sizes all right now let's get access to our testimonials wrapper let's go with a width of 100 percent height of auto and we want to turn this into a flex box to ensure that all of the items within our testimonials wrapper are evenly spaced. So let's use display flex, flex direction column, justify content center, align item center, and let's give this a gap of 25. And we also want some padding on the top. So let's use 10 pixels. And we're going to use a position of relative so we can use a position of absolute on these two buttons so we can place them in the center of the screen here. All right, let's move on to our images. We want to give those a width of 110 pixels and a height of 110 pixels. Let's place them in the center with margin auto. And let's make them round with border radius 50%. Let's give them a border of five pixels, a solid light gray. And of course, this is where our images are going to go. So we're going to use background position center and 
background size cover and let's also give this a box shadow of 005 pixels with a color of BBB. All right, for image number one, let's change the background image. Let's use URL. And I already have a list of URLs that I'm going to be using for this project. I'll leave them in the description so you can just copy and paste. But feel free to use images that you have on your computer if that's what you want to do. All right, here's the first one. Let's go ahead and select all of this and copy it twice. Let's change this to image number two. And we're gonna change this to image number three. All right, now let's get access to our header and we're gonna change the font size of our H1 to 2.5 RAM. Now let's get access to the slider wrapper. We're gonna give that a width of 100%. And for the slides themselves, we're also gonna use a width of 100%, text align center. And we're gonna go with a line height of 1.5. Let's change the font style to italic. And we also wanna add some padding on the left and the right. So we're gonna go with 40 pixels. For the P element, we also wanna add some padding on the bottom. So let's go with 40 pixels now let's add some css to the previous and next button so let's start off with a padding of two pixels a width of 30 cursor pointer let's make them round with border radius 50 percent let's remove the outline let's use a transition of 0 0.7 seconds ease in and out for our hover effect let's add a border of three pixels solid white change the background color to black let's add a box shadow of 0, 0, 005 pixels with a color of bbb and let's use position absolute so we could place them in the center of the screen. Let's bring them down from the top by 50%. And let's use Z index one just in case we need it. All right, for our previous image, we want it to be on the left. So we're gonna set that to 0%. And for our next image, we want it to be on the right. So we're gonna set that to 0%. All right, now let's add the hover effect to both of our buttons. So let's change the background color to gray when you hover these buttons. All right, now for the icon, let's go ahead and change the color to white and also the font size to one RAM. All right now for our three circles here, let's place them in the center and make them look a little bit better. So we're gonna get access to them by doing TNS dash nav. Let's use text align center. And now for the actual buttons, we're gonna go with a border of none. Let's go with a padding of eight pixels, border radius 50%, background color white, 
and let's separate them a bit with margin left of 15 pixels right now this is the final thing we're going to do tns nav and tns nav active so we want to change the background color of the active button we're going to make that gray all right and there we go that's going to be it for this tutorial please make sure to hit the like button if you found this useful and if you have not subscribed i invite you to subscribe to the channel if this does not work for you however you can go ahead and hit the thumbs down maybe you can leave me a comment tell me what happened and i can point you in the right direction that's going to be it for me i'll see you guys in the next one thank you for watching